Hey everybody, welcome back to another installment of Conversations in Wire. I'm your host, James Browning. I work here at the Softflex Company, which is a beading wire company based out of Sonoma, California. Um, I thought I would jump back on here. I know it's been a while, but I decided to make some uh, little skeletons out of craft wire. So I thought we'd go over that today and see how that looks. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to need for tools. Um, this is kind of a tool heavy project. Um, so as always, when working with our craft wire, we're going to want um, our nylon jaw tools. For this um, project, you're gonna want some round nose tools or these pair of pliers, which is a, a multi-level looping tool. So it's got all different sizes of loops here all in one spot. So you can definitely just use this one tool. And that's what I'm going to use today. Um, you're also going to want a pair of um, flat nose or chain nose pliers so you can hold on to stuff. And then a pair of cutters. So the wire that we are going to use today is our Softflex craft wire. I'm gonna use 22 gauge today. Um, you can do this in other gauges. Um, 20 gauge is probably the heaviest I would go because we don't want it too, too thick and too heavy. So um, 22 is what I'm gonna use for this project. And then um, our craft wire is a, this one is a copper core and it is um, silver plated over copper and it's got an extra layer of coating on top of it so that it's non-tarnish. Um, this is a great wire. It is dead soft, so it's really easy to work with. Um, the only thing that I would caution against using this wire for is if you wanted to hammer out the wire for anything, um, I would maybe try and go with just bare copper because when you hammer on our wire that's non-tarnish, you'll end up seeing that coating come flaking off or showing up. It's not quite as fun. So um, with that being said, this is amazing wire, and we're gonna go ahead and just jump right into it. So we're going to make these cute little skeletons. And the best thing to do is to kind of get all of your stuff cut and made and then assemble your skeleton. So we're going to um, cut all these pieces out. Now, I'm gonna show you how to make this cool little spiral thing, and this can be used for multiple different projects, but if you don't wanna use the spiral and you have yourself a cute little bead, like a skull or this wonderful little pumpkin that I found, um, you can go ahead and use that. But you just need to do a simple wire wrap or just a little loop on either side um, to attach that bead, all right? so. Um, we're going to aim for this body because uh, this body was made in 20 gauge um, and it's a little thicker, a little bigger, kind of early. So we're going to try and make it a little smaller. All right. So what we want to do is kind of name off the, um, the pieces in our mind while we cut. So first we're going to want the head. And the head, because we're making that spiral, we're gonna use about a foot of wire. So we're gonna cut that off. Okay, and then the next, we're going to want to do a rib cage. Now with the rib cage, um, I don't like taking it off the spool. And the best thing to do is to find something to wrap around. You could use these tools if you would like, especially if you're making a smaller um, skeleton using a smaller wire. Um, but I think it's easier to use like a pen. Um, I'm gonna use the handles of my tools here to make the spiral. So all we're gonna do is just wrap this around and you want to find something that's round not like like see these have a kind of a flat look to it these are pretty round so we're going to use these and i just want to wrap we're going to make a spiral like a spring and i think let's see one two three four five four, six seven eight nine i would say ten wraps is fine 
and I'm gonna squish them together. So when you wrap, try and keep them wrapped tight together. That'll help with the rib cage later. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Okay, let's cut that off. All right, we're going to put this aside for the moment because we're going to work with this later. Okay, so now we have the head, we have the rib cage. Now we need shoulders. So shoulders, I did about a two inch piece. Okay, and let's say we're going to do the arms now. The arms, this is all rather uh, piecemeal and you can totally make this up as you go along. Um, so I don't have exact measurements, but um, what you want to do is not necessarily cut gigantic pieces for this so you don't waste. So for the arms, I did about an inch, inch and a half. And I want four of those because we have two arms with two pieces each. So, two bones. Okay. Now, let's go with the hips. Oh, actually, no. We want to make a backbone. And I'm just going to make this about two inches as well. Um, but that might end up being cut a little depending upon how small we get our rib cage when it's finished. Okay, so now we want some hips. Now, you can do the same size as your shoulders, but for me, I think it, it looks a little better if you make them a little smaller than the shoulders. So if this is the shoulder, um, let's go, let's go about third less. Shoulder, backbone, hips. All right, and then the last thing we need is just legs, which is two bones as well. Um, so the first part of the leg is a little shorter, and then the second part I used a little bit longer so that I can create feet. And you don't have to create feet, you can just make them look like the arms with just the, the loops on the side, but I'm gonna make the top part of the leg the same size as my arms. So I just need two of those. Okay. And then I'm going to make my bottom part of the leg about, I would say, half an inch longer. And like I said, we can always trim these down later um, once we get to the fiddly bit. But I'm just cutting now so I can get all of this out of the way and just have stuff to work with. Okay, so let's put my wrap back on here. Kind of a moot point because I let this unwind. All right, so let's get started. Let's start with the head. So with this tool, I'm going to make a spiral. And a flat spiral, I showed you guys how to do this in a previous video, how to make a cool flat spider. But this is different because it's going to have um, loops on either side. And if you do this right, you can actually stack these flat spirals in different sizes. So this will get you started and then you can play with that later. So we're going to find a point about halfway and we're going to go on our smallest loop on these pliers or just use like the tip of your um, round nose. And we're just going to make a little loop, okay? Now, um, what you want to do next is grab your chain nose and then hold on to that center bit and take your nylon jaw tools and just straighten that wire out so it's nice and smooth, okay? Now we're going to take our wire and we're going to start making a spiral and getting it started with your hand is is good and then we can switch to 
our pliers. Remember when we're making our flat spiral, we're going to hold on and bend the wire around that top part. This gets the wire close and keeps the shape of the circle. And we're just going to do this until we get the size of head that we want. Maybe I bent it too much. And that's okay. Best part about making is that if you mess up, it just makes it look handmade and not from some factory somewhere. That, and you know, with this little bend, it kind of gives it a more of a skull shape. So that's a happy accident. And I apologize if I go out of frame. It has been a long time since I have been in front of the camera. Now on yours, if you want a bigger head, you would aim for um, not the halfway point, but maybe a little bit further down. So you have more wire to work with because I am about to run out and I still need to make the loop to connect it to whatever I want to connect it to, it's like an ear wire or a jump ring to put it onto a pendant. So I'm going to stop here and then I'm going to get my looping tools and I kind of want to make sure that all of my loops are uniform. So I'm going to use the second one for the majority of the loops. So all of the loops will be about the same. And I'm just going to put it a little bit above the spiral and I'm just going to make the spiral myself. Because what this does is allows me to kind of position this where I want it to be. And then I can bend that loop back and cut off the excess. Okay, so this was not the best, but I think you get the idea. Let's see if we can get that loop a little rounder. I'm just going to snip it off. Okay, so we have the top and we can just fiddle with it to make it look the way that we want. And then we're just going to cut off the excess here. Like I said, you can change where you position it. You're going to waste a little on this project just because it's kind of fiddly, I guess. So let's cut this off and make another loop. Okay, so I positioned that in the wrong spot. So let's back that out, squish our wire a little bit so it's a little flatter again. You know, the other thing that I like to do if I, you know, give myself too much wire is I make a, a little bit of a coil and then you can cut off wherever you want. I'm just gonna bring it back. Okay, so there. Now we have our second loop. And fiddle with it so you're happy. There, okay. So we've made our head, hooray! <laughs> that hard part's done. All right, now we're gonna take our rib cage and start messing with it. Um, if you wrap this right, you shouldn't have to mess with it too much. I did not wrap it right because I um, left my tool that I really wanted to use upstairs. So the point that we want to do is we want to create 
a squished rib cage together. Hmm. You know what? I think I may want to redo this because this is too sprung. I really want it to be more like this. So, well, let's see if we can work with it. I'm gonna grab part of it and I'm going to try and tighten down the spring a little bit. Let's see if we can get it to start going together. No. All right, I'm going to redo this. Okay. I'm going to take it off the spool this time. Because that might allow me to wrap it tighter. Okay, so. See there, that's better. Okay. So now, um, so we have this little spring. What we want to do is we want to make one of the ends of the spring narrower. So it kind of gives like a an hourglass sort of shape. So we're going to take one end and we're going to grab it. We're just going to start coiling it in and just sort of tightening it up. And as we wind it, it's going to tighten the spring above it. And this is a fiddly bit. We're gonna go back through and we're going to adjust our springs so that they're nice um, and round again. But by grabbing the wire and kind of forcing it into a tighter, tighter spiral, it, um, it will give you that tornado shape that we want for the rib cage. Okay, and then we can just kind of back it out and squish it together. And then what we kind of also want to do is we want to take this top one and we want to give ourselves a little, a little loop at the top. So I'm going to pull this out so it's kind of sprung. And I'm going to take my the one, two, three, fourth biggest one. And I'm going to make a loop. And then I'm going to try and wrap that loop back in. And you can use your pliers or your pliers here. Okay, so now we've got a shape. Now we can kind of open it up, spring it to where we want it. Just kind of make sure everything is level. And there we've got a rib cage. I know it kind of looks like a little tornado, but trust me, it's a rib cage. Okay, so now let's make the shoulders. Was is this the shoulders? No, that was the backbone, right? Uh, I think these are the shoulders. All right, so 
Um, to make the shoulders and the hips, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to find the center and we're going to make a loop right in the center by just wrapping those wires around our tool on either side. So when we take it off, it looks like that. Okay. So then our loop is going to be looking like that. Okay. Now we can take, remember we decided that this was the size for all of our loops. We're going to make a loop on either end of the shoulders to attach our arms to. Okay. Okay, so now we have shoulders. And you can kind of point them down if you want. Okay, now let's make the backbone. The backbone is just simply a um, same sort of thing without something in the center. So a wire with two loops on the end. So there's one end. And I'm going to leave the other end unformed for the moment. And then let's see. Oh, these were the hips, right? So let's make those hips again. So we used the third. And finding the center. And wrapping it around. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to go to that second. make a loop. So this is going to be pretty tight up against the other ones like that. So that is okay because we want small hips, remember. Okay, so now we've got some hips. All right, now let's make the arms. Same sort of thing that we did for the backbone. We're just going to make um, just a bone, basically. So we're going to make the loop. We're going to Bring it back so we've got kind of an eye pin going on and then do the same thing for the bottom it kind of looks like a bone all right so let's see do that for the following all of the arms look the same hands are sweaty. My wire just slipped right out of them. Okay. There we go. Now I, I'm ending up making like a, an S with my loops, but you don't have to. You can face the loops the same way. It really is just preference on that. There's no real reason to separate them like that. It's just that the way that I'm putting them on the the mandrel, they're ending up being opposite to each other, so that's okay. Okay, so now we've got arms almost all done here. Okay, so now we've got the arms. Now let's do the legs. So the top part of the legs is the same as the arms, so we're just going to do the bone there. And really try and finish those loops. Don't be shoddy like me. Okay, so that's the top of one leg. Here is the top of the second leg. Okay. Now the bottom part of the leg. So we're going to make the top part of the bottom part first. <laughs> I know that sounds confusing, but you get it. So we have the loop at the top. Okay, so now 
what we're going to do is we're going to find a bigger loop. I would say probably the this fourth one, the same I think we used for the middle part of the of the hips and shoulders. So we're just going to make a big loop. And then I'm just going to bend it. So see, it's like a little leg. Let's do that for the same thing here. And then bend it. So there, we've got the bottom of the legs. Okay, so let's start putting our skeleton together. So we're gonna take our um, rib cage and then we're going to take our backbone. We're gonna thread it through so that it pokes out the bottom. And we're gonna take our shoulders, which is the bigger one, and we're gonna kinda of pass this through that top loop right next to where the backbone is. So we have two loops sitting next to each other. And then I'm gonna take my head and you can decide which one you want to connect to the top and which one you want to connect to the neck. I'm gonna use the longer end here. And I'm going to open up the ring and I'm going to thread it through both of these loops here. So catch the backbone and catch the shoulders. So then we've got something that looks like this. And then I'm just gonna close that up. And then we've connected our head and we want to twist it, the head, so that it's facing out while allowing the rest of the body to dangle, okay? So that was the hard part. Now we're going to make a loop at the end to attach our hips to. And I like to make it a little short, but not too short, so that the hips will dangle right where I want them. So let's snip that off. All right, and to help finalize this process, you may want to put a little loop here at the end of your rib cage. And that's just to allow the this to be kind of a finished part. And things are falling apart and I apologize. I should have finished that first, but so we've got this. Oh, our backbone fell off. <laughs> uh oh, okay. So we're going to pass this back up through. So this is the fun thing about trying to film projects in one shot, is when it falls apart, it falls apart. All right, so we've got that back. We're just gonna pop that right back onto the ring. Okay, there, now we're back together. So we've got our head, our ribs, our shoulders, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. So then let's go ahead and throw our hips on here. So open up that bottom ring. There we go. So now we've got our hips on. And let's go ahead and build our arms. This is just easy. Just make sure that you close up your rings pretty good. 
so that they will not fall apart. Uh, if you want to hammer these pieces um, to kind of work harden them, you definitely could do that if you want. Um, I think that if they're just going to be uh, earrings or what have you, that it shouldn't be too big of a problem. So there we have one arm. And there's two. Close that up. All right, let's put the arms on. Okay, are we about there? There we go. Okay. And then grab, this looks really messy and everything, but when the skeleton's all put together, it will, it will work, I swear, I promise. It's just the nature of being a skeleton. You look like a mess of bones until you stand up, so. It will all work out, I promise. So don't get frustrated when you're trying to put this together. Um, the wire is really forgiving, so if you bend something out of shape, you can always just bend it back. Not get those closed good enough. And then also make sure that your shoulders are closed too, so that they have a, a less chance of slipping out. Okay. So it looks like we have an issue with the way that this is laying, so Let's try and get this to lay right. Actually, let's put the legs on and then we'll mess with the finalization. How's that? So let's make our legs real quick. Okay, so there's one leg. and two legs, and we'll attach them to the hips. Make sure you close it up real good so they don't fall out. Hey guys, so um, it looks like my video cut off at the end there, but what I did um, was I readjusted the shoulders so that they were sitting right and I finished up with the legs. So um, I think uh, you've got a pretty good idea of what this is supposed to look like. So if you have any questions or anything, feel free to put them into the comment section below. If you like the video, leave me a like. Um, hit that subscribe button uh, and that little bell to make sure that you're getting notified when we have new videos up. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this. I know I enjoyed hanging out with you guys, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.